Lesson 4, A Brief History of St. Paul In 1837, the Dakota people signed a treaty ceding their lands on the east side of the Mississippi River. Before this treaty was even ratified, individual traders, mostly whiskey sellers, began staking claims along the east side of the Mississippi River near Fort Snelling and Mendota. One such claim was made by a Canadian voyager named Pierre Perrant, who was fortunate enough to stake a claim at the present site of the city of St. Paul. Within a few years, Perrant lost his claim, but the settlement around him adopted his nickname, Pig's Eye, which was based on his peculiar facial appearance. The region became further settled when, in May of 1840, all squatters living near Fort Snelling were forced to move beyond the boundaries of the Fort Snelling Military Reserve. Many of them took up residence along the river where Perrant's original claim had stood. Then, in October 1841, Reverend Lucien Galtier, who had been stationed at Mendota, built a rude log chapel in the growing settlement along the river which he dedicated to the Apostle St. Paul. The church stood at the landing and so the place went from being called Pig's Eye to St. Paul's Landing and then finally St. Paul. In 1845, St. Paul was a small settlement of about 30 families, but the population slowly grew until, in 1849, Minnesota became a territory and St. Paul its capital. From this point on, the population of the city grew rapidly and took on all the characteristics of a modern capital city. Upon arriving to St. Paul in 1851, traveler Frank Blackwell Mayer described the city as follows. St. Paul's is situated on a bluff probably about 50 feet above the surface of the river, commanding a fine view of the surrounding country and catching the breezes which sweep down the course of the river and over the adjacent hills. The plain which surmounts the bluff is of ample extent for the erection of the proposed city. Two years ago it was little more than a mere trading post for the Indians, but already it assumes the appearance of a bustling New England village and well attests the presence of an energetic and free soil population. It is singular to meet so few old residenters, for no one seems to have passed more than one winter here.